Okay, navigation. This part's pretty simple. You have to consider that the areas that you're going to be dealing with problems in, surviving in, whatever, it's probably going to be an area that you're um, at least somewhat familiar with. So uh, this is an M2 uh, lensetic compass. Um, it's a military issue compass. This is going to be a really good thing to have just to you know keep yourself oriented what direction you're traveling. It has both mils and degrees. Not that you're going to be dealing with artillery, but however, you know I've got here a grenade pouch that I carry my compass in. Compass is a very nice thing to have because as long as you pay attention to topographical features where you're at you should be able to orient yourself fairly well in terms of what you're doing now this is a map bag I brought this out just to show I mean you're not gonna have a map of you know you're not gonna have a military map of whatever area you know your town however this is nice to keep random documents in you know if if you do happen to have just some random, you know, maps, a little map bag wouldn't hurt to keep, you know, important documents in, things like that. Anyway, that's just some basics. You want to have a good compass, you know, just give yourself, you know, a good idea what direction you're going. I mean, you'd be surprised just how much a compass will help you. And I would, you know, definitely recommend the M2. It's, it's an excellent compass. So this should give you guys a fairly good idea. I mean, this is just field gear. It's just basic survival. I mean, basically, if you don't need it to survive, don't carry it. It's just going to weigh you down. It's going to bog you down. And this is not everything. I mean, there's going to be other little random things that you want to, you know, have to assist you. You know, some people might ha like to have baby wipes laying around. You might want baby wipes. You might want certain types of food, whatever. But just remember, whatever you're carrying, you know, it's got to come with you and you've got to lug it. You've got, it's got to be your baby. So this should give you a good idea. I want to go on and show you one more thing with the uh, vacuum sealing uh, technology that's available to consumers now and it'll give you a good idea how to waterproof things. Reynolds makes this uh, handy vac system. Now, vacuum sealing technology was one of those things that for a while it was really expensive, but it's kind of hit the mainstream and a lot of people use this for food and stuff. But for field use, these things are awesome. So let's say you live in a very, very wet area where you know these rubber-lined rucksacks, your rubber field bag that lines the rucksack, let's just say that's not enough and your stuff is still getting wet. Well, this, you can seal ammunition in here. You can seal magazines. You can seal anything you want. So let's just say I've got some socks. You know, this is just an example, but you know, these things also save space too. I mean, if you uh, if you're wanting to pack tight, keep everything, you know, packed, you know, like I said, real tight, then these things are awesome because you can really just get that stuff com compact, okay? But you know, got a couple of rounds of ammunition, a magazine, some socks, you know. Plus, you got to think, it's rattling around. You know, you're running out, running around out in the woods. You don't want to make any racket. Know what I mean? So let's seal this thing. What this does is it sucks the air out of the bag. Real simple. Okay, had a little bit of a malfunction there with my vacuum seal. I had to, uh, you'll, you'll likely have to go and get it, find a uh, flat hard surface somewhere to vacuum seal. But anyway, as you can see, we got a pair of socks, vacuum sealed, a 45 magazine, couple of rounds of ammunition and as you can see no noise see you want to be nice and quiet but you see the compact size that's just one pair of socks this bag is huge I could put four or five pairs of socks in this thing and vacuum seal it up and it's gonna be very compact less bulky makes you faster in the woods okay so this is just an example you know the vacuum sealing technology is a very cool thing to have laying around now granted if you carry the little unit with you into some bags, sure, it's going to add a little bulk, a little bit more weight, but being able to vacuum seal out in the field is a very, very handy thing. If you kill some game and you want a little meat, you can vacuum seal some meat. Now, granted, if you don't have access to refrigeration, it will make it last a little longer, even raw. Uh, now, granted, 
you know, that may be a difficult thing to uh, work out. But I'm just saying, you know, the, uh, the benefits of vacuum seal technology quickly become apparent when you see the compact size and reduced, uh, you know, noise you're going to make carrying this around. So that's just an idea. But I did want to mention one thing I forgot to talk about. And that's uh, small fishing kits you can get. Uh, you know, when you're living on the land, uh, it helps to have at least some, you know, means to be able to catch fish. And here we have one of the Zebco um, tackle totes. You know, it's just a little box. It's got a little reservoir here to put, you know, uh, lures, hooks, things like that in. Uh, it's got a small collapsible fishing pole. It breaks into pieces. And then a small little Zebco 33. This is good to, you know, be able to live. Also, uh, they sell these little collapsible fishing poles. As you can see, it just telescopes out. This one doesn't have a reel on it, of course, but, you know, you put your, you know, the Zebco would fit right on it. So something like this is definitely a viable option to be able to live off the land. Um, I just thought I'd mention this. You know, I'm basically just trying to, you know, pass along all the things I think are important. I mean, sure, it may be one of those extra things that you have to carry along, and to some people that might be inconvenience, but for an extra pound or two, you know, if, if you can't shoot any game that day, just catch a fish or two, definitely a good source of protein. This was uh, not meant to be a do-all, say-all answer to surviving. Um, but in terms of protection, basic field survivability, living out in, out in the wilderness, these are some things that will definitely help you. There's always going to be other things that you're going to want to have laying around, but this should give you a pretty good start you know, as to what you may need. I'm going to follow up with some high resolution photos of some of these items up close, uh, just to give you an idea. And uh, one thing I didn't mention too in the video is that it may help to have some kind of basic uh, field uh, sleep system. They, ha they sell uh, compression sacks for sleeping bags where you can, you know, compress all the air out of them, make them real light and easy to carry. A little lightweight sleeping bag and a little, you know, wet weather poncho or, or some wet weather gear would be a handy thing to have. Basically, just depends on your situation, your um, climate that you're working in. I mean, obviously, if you're in a desert climate, you're going to want balka calavas, eye protection, things like that. You know, you might want some uh, knee, pa knee pads, elbow pads, things like that. This should give you a very good uh, idea of some of the things you might want to have laying around. But like I said, I'm going to follow up with some uh, detailed photos. We're going to go from there.